How's it going? Father, Hans doesn't want to stay in the attic anymore. What happened? It's not his fault. How's it going? Your brother's a good-for-nothing imbecile, Anna. You hear me? A feeble idiot! How's it going? Siberia. Kate Walker, what does all this mean? I don't know, Oscar. Hans has had a kind of fit, a kind of delirium. His health isn't exactly 100% right now. Why, that's simply awful, Kate Walker! We must do something! Things cannot go on like this! Please, calm down. I'll see what I can do. Okay, Kate Walker, but do hurry! Oscar? Are you still here, Kate Walker? Mr. Vorlberg needs you terribly. Please do not procrastinate. Hans isn't feeling so great, Oscar. You've got to help me treat him. I do not have sufficient knowledge of human mechanics. The human body presents a somewhat complex system, Kate Walker. Okay. Of course I understand. I'll try to find someone competent. Please do hurry, Kate Walker. Hans Vorlberg seems to be running out of steam. As soon as I find help, I'll come back, Oscar. Oscar, is this the first time that Mr. Vorlberg has had an illness like this? I don't know Mr. Vorlberg any more than you do, Kate Walker. I am only an automaton, after all. A machine born of creative genius. The feeling of concern I feel for my creator at this precise moment is merely the result of a wheelwork combination designed to produce just this effect. I don't like it when you talk like that, Oscar. If we go now, Oscar, we're sure to find someone who can help us on the way. Nothing of the sort, Kate Walker. The rest of our journey is long and perilous. What will we do if we encounter no help along the way? I guess you're right. Oscar, I should go try and get help in this town. Sadly, Kate Walker, there is clearly no doctor here. There must be someone. What do people do here when they're sick? Right. I'm going to look for help. Yes, do hurry up, Kate Walker. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do for you, Miss Walker? Would you have something to treat a fever? My friend is sick. I'm sorry. I sold my last pills last week. Is there a doctor around here, or a pharmacy or something? Around these parts? That would surprise me. They say the monks up there can patch a man up. At least people around here go up there sometimes. Thanks for all your help, Colonel. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker. Malka? Yes, Kate? My friend Hans is very sick. He needs taking care of. Oh, otherwise he's going to die, isn't he? Like Mama. I don't know. He wants to get to the end of his journey so badly. Sometimes that is not enough, Kate. 
since he was really young, Hans has dreamed of a land called Siberia. Siberia doesn't exist. It's just a story they tell kids to make them sleep. And I'm no kid anymore. I believe the story though, Malka. So, you're going to have to help your friend, Cape. Tell me, do you know anyone who could help heal my friend Hans? Zirkos has special tonics in his bar. No, I need a real doctor. Then you'll have to go to the monastery. I suppose there are monks at the monastery. That's right. Monks with big black robes. They're really creepy. There's nothing to be afraid of. As monks, they must be good men. And you tell me they can treat Hans? The Patriarch is a stern old man. He won't treat your friend if you don't follow the monastery rules. How do you know that, Malka? He wouldn't look after Mama straight away. Because of the rules. That's why she's dead. I'm sorry, Malka. Howdy, Mr. Sirkos. Good day to you, Miss Walker. How's our friend Hans Svorlberg coming along? Uh, not great news. Ah, well, if I can be of service. Whatever you require, don't hesitate to shout. Mr. Sirkos, I'm worried about Hans's health. Dang, it's all my fault. Never should have asked him to do me that favor. What do you mean, favor? No major work or anything, just to get my wind-up Broncos back in again. Oh, don't blame yourself. Hans was already ill before he came to see you. You've got nothing to do with it. Mr. Sirkos, you wouldn't know someone who could treat Hans Varlberg, would you? Oh, not many pill pushers around here. Guess there's always the monks. The monks, you say? People around here say the Patriarch of the Monastery has healing powers. They also say he's a ding -a ling a bit of a fanatic, if you know what I mean. Well, whatever. I have no choice. Mr. Sirkos, could you please introduce me to the Patriarch of the Monastery? Hmm. Want my opinion. Best stay right away. Oh, why is that? Have you ever heard a showman and a priest sing a duet together? They think my cabaret is a den of debauchery, and that I'm a funky old miscreant luring lambs from the altar. Really, Mr. Sirkos, we're not in the 19th century anymore. But we're not too far here, Miss Walker. Believe me, best I don't put my finger in that pie. Do the monks have a telephone? Uh, they don't even have electricity. You'll have to go up there in person, Miss Walker. Then try to convince them to take care of your friend. How do you get up to the monastery? When you go out of here, turn right. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Tell me, Mr. Sirkos. It was you who took in that little girl Malka into your care, wasn't it? I just couldn't bear to leave a little girl like that. What happened to her mother? Oh, a gypsy woman fleeing God knows what monkey business. <laughs> she got here half dead and crazed with fever. The monks helped her, isn't that right? Uh, you could say that. When they stopped being high and mighty, they took her up to their monastery for treatment. But it was far too late for the poor girl. Them old crows make up their own rules. They'd leave a man to rot rather than get their habits dirty. I don't like them one bit, Miss Walker. What rules are you talking about? It's a phony old custom. To decide whether a dying man is actually dying at all, the patriarch of the monastery looks at the patient's face before deciding yay or nay. But how? I don't understand. They kind of make this print of the face on a piece of cloth, you know, like the Shroud of Jesus in the Bible. I must confess I don't really understand this Shroud story. You'll see, just outside the village, the monks have put this kind of iron box. A box containing a pile of linen sheets. 
When you put one of these sheets over the face of the sick man, it has the curious property of soaking up all his sweat and juices. So effective it is that all the features of his face can be seen on the cloth. And so the old patriarch looks to this print to form his diagnosis? At least what he can judge is whether that face on the shroud is sick enough to get dragged up those rocks to the monastery and be treated by him. I suppose anybody can take a cloth from the crate if he needs it? You suppose wrong, Miss Walker. One person has charge of the distribution of the said shrouds, and that's Malka. She sure is proud of her position. The Patriarch himself gave her the responsibility, and that kid ain't giving it up for no man, believe me. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker, and good luck. Mighty kind, Mr. Sirkos. Tell me, how is it going? He told me why they couldn't treat her at the monastery. Yes, Kate. Sometimes, people get too sick and there's nothing that can be done. Is your friend too sick? I hope he isn't. I'm going to help you, Kate. Can you help me, Malka? Hmm. Only if your friend is a little bit sick. Not too much or you'll be sad. We'll see. Let's give it a try, you know? Like for your mother, with the monks. On the road to the monastery, there's a kind of box with sheets. The monks call them shrouds. I'm going to give you a token so you can get one. It's very important, Kate Walker. Then what do I do with this shroud? Take it and lay it over your friend's face. <sighs> okay, I'll give it a try. Thank you for your help. Come back and see me. I like you, Kate. It's been barricaded. These folks don't like people just dropping in uninvited. Really a bit too cold. This thing's stuck. Really a bit too cold. I'll be needing some warm clothes. Mr. Sirkos? What can I do for you, miss? It's colder than the North Pole out there, Mr. Sirkos. Do I have to go up to the monastery on foot? There isn't some other form of transportation? Don't even think about it, Miss Walker. Only pony can make it up there is Shank's pony. 
You're going to have to use your feet, I'm sorry to say. It's really cold around here. I can't go to the monastery dressed like this. Dead right, Miss Walker. Best to be careful in these temperatures. You wouldn't have something warm to lend me, would you, Mr. Sirkos? Um, <laughs> not gonna be easy what with you having mighty different uh, vital statistics and all, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Please excuse me. I'm going to try to find some clothes someplace. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker. And good luck. Mighty kind, Mr. Sirkos. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do for you, Miss Walker? Our route is still long and my friend is suffering. I don't know what to do. Siberia is hellish cold at this time of year, Miss Walker. And journeys take an age. Your friend isn't in the prime of youth anymore. I want to go up to the monastery, but it's so cold outside. Would you have some warm clothes to loan me? Maybe so. I might find what you want up in the attic. I'll get the ladder out. I'll pay you for what I use, of course. Don't you worry, Katyuchka. You're a true ray of sunshine in this dusty old shop. And we don't see sunshine here every day. You'll find something that'll fit you in the attic, I'm sure. There you go, miss. I can't climb up there anymore. Now, where to find some place appropriate to slip into this? At last, a bit of privacy, for once. Toasty, and not unelegant even.
Right now, I'm ready to take on the frozen north. Why, it suits you like a dream, Miss Walker. You're a beautiful little snow fairy. <laughs> I was told the Patriarch of the Monastery can diagnose illness if he's shown a cotton sheet marked with the feverish face of the patient. What do you think about that, Colonel? Here in Mother Russia, Katyuchka, there are stranger tales to be told. From what I've heard, Colonel, the Patriarch of the Monastery is some kind of healer. I'm just an old Cossack, and to me there's only one real remedy for everything. A good shot of vodka. And that'd finish off poor hands for sure. Thanks for all your help, Colonel. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker. Excuse me, I'm sorry to disturb you, uh, sir? Blessed art thou, my sister. What can I do for you? Um, my name is Kate Walker, and my train is currently at the station in Romansburg. Oh, oh, Romansburg. Pretty town, but not the kind of town for pretty strangers. Pretty, solitary strangers. <laughs> I don't intend to hang around long, brother. I'm traveling with an old man, Hans Vorlberg, and... <laughs> Vorlberg? Did you say Vorlberg, my sister? You know him? No, <laughs> but I know someone else. <sighs> ah, can you hear? It is the sweet song of the Merula Alba. If only I could catch a glimpse. Such a rare, pretty bird. Few are they who say in truth they have spied her beauty. <laughs> it is probably seeking some other Merula Alba. What is a Merula Alba? A rare bird. <laughs> it can never be seen as it is as white as snow. They say that when a man sees it, his mind clears. And his intelligence grows and grows. There seem to be a lot of birds around here. Yes, yes, but the only one that interests me is the Merula Alba. My friend is very ill, you know. It is God's will 
God's will. <laughs> what can I do, my sister? What can I do? Maybe you could visit him at his bedside. Oh, 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 never, my sister, never. I would incur the wrath of our Lord and Patriarch. <laughs> I'm looking for someone with a medical background. Someone who can tend to the sick. Our Patriarch is a remarkable doctor, my sister. He cures bodies as well as souls. <laughs> you couldn't help me, could you please? I am but a simple monk. You have to go see our Patriarch yonder, in the monastery. You say that I could find someone to help me, up there at the monastery? Yes, at the monastery, oh yes. <laughs> I rang at the monastery, but there was no reply. Maybe they don't want to let me in. Can you tell me, is there another way in? There is no other way, my sister. <laughs> Why won't they let me into the monastery? Dura Lex said Lex. <laughs> I'm sorry? The law is hard, but it is the law, my sister. <laughs> what law? I don't like questions, my sister. The law is the law is the law. I must absolutely find a doctor for my friend. I just do the laundry, my sister, that is all. Down here, there are some doctors, and others do the laundry. You are going to make me late. you hear? It is the Merula Alba again. Why won't you help me? I must finish my chores before Evensong, my sister. You live in the monastery, I suppose. That's right, my sister. <laughs> Are there many of you up there? A few old monks. <laughs> You are those who heed the calling in this age. Tell me, what have we got to do to get into the monastery? You must pull the rope that rings the bell, my sister, but not too hard, or you will scare the birds. Don't scare them. A monk will show you in. Thank you. Um, I rang the bell, but the monk at the door doesn't seem to want to show me in. There are rules. Rules and traditions to respect here. Respect. <laughs> what rules? What traditions? That some people are less worthy than others. Okay. So how does that monk up there make an opinion about my worthiness by just looking at me? It, it is... it is not a question to ask, my sister. You're telling me that I'm not worthy to enter your monastery? I didn't say. No. I just... I just wash dirty laundry, that's all. <laughs> yes, you did say that. You implied I wasn't worthy. Femina inconcessus. <laughs> I don't understand Latin. Latin, like the birds. Erythacus rubecula, picus viridis. Merula Alba. You speak Latin, then? Oh, monk's Latin. Pigeon Latin. Hmm. You seem to know the Latin names of birds. <laughs> Pretty birds. Pretty birds. Picus viridis? Woodpecker. How about Erythacus rubicula? <sighs> Robin. Red breast. And Merula Alba? White raven, my sister. Femina inconsensus? Women. Forbidden. <laughs> uh, no. It... Right. I get it. Because I'm a woman, I'm forbidden access to the monastery. And now I understand. That's the rule, sister. I can't change the rules. Of course, brother. Women are the source of all sin. Isn't that so? I'm going now. I'll be back soon. What?
Colonel? Ah, Miss Walker. Colonel, you don't have one of those whistles for making bird noises among your many treasures here, do you? A bird call? Why, I sell them by the truckload during the hunting season. I've got a whole collection of them. I think I've got just what you need somewhere. Aha! Thanks for all your help, Colonel. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker. Do you plan on returning it? Ever? Okay, no. Can you hear? Can you hear? The Merula Alba. It is calling to me. Calling to me. Good evening, sir. My name is Kate Walker, and you are... Sorry, I... Oh. This monk's taken a vow of silence. He won't speak to me.
I wouldn't dare interrupt the meditation of a monk. Whiling away those celibate hours. This is really amazing work all the same. Hello? Anybody there? Uh, excuse me. What? A woman? Women are expressly prohibited. What the devil are you doing here, woman? My name's Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer from New York. Excuse me, but I absolutely must speak to you, and your monks wouldn't let me in. Miss Walker, your female presence in this dwelling of monastic retreat is unwelcome. It is very troubling. Please leave quickly. Please forgive my slightly cavalier methods to get to see you, Father, but my cause is just, I assure you. I have no need of assurance, my girl. Remember, you are here beneath the gaze of the Almighty. I have a friend who is really sick. In the village, I was told that- We must all brave the ordeals the Lord sends us, my child. My friend is named Hans Vorlberg. He has devoted his life to making fantastic mechanical machines. His automaton soothed the harsh daily labor of the people of his day, and amused them, entertained them. He's a genius inventor, you know. Hmm. An inventor, you say? The inspiration of such people is often cowed to humility before the marvels of God's own creation. I have come to ask the assistance of the priest healer in the monastery. My friend is very unwell, and very old. Sometimes a body weary of life refuses treatment. That is why we here tend to the soul. From what element is your friend suffering? A high fever. It started with a kind of fit. He felt... Sometimes we have to just accept the inevitable, my child and resign ourselves to the call of time. You don't understand. Maybe Hans is old and frail, but he has but one desire, to continue his journey. We have to learn how to meet our fate, my child. This is God's will. My friend needs treatment. You are the only one for miles around who can give him the care he needs. I need a sign. From the Almighty, or else I can do nothing for your friend. I am sorry, Miss Walker. I really need your help, Father. You're our only hope. My girl, I attend only to extreme cases, grave illness and madness. But this is an extreme case, Father. There is a rule, Miss Walker. You must respect it. Bring me the imprint 
of your friend's suffering. I know what you were telling me. I brought the Shroud. Show me, my child. Right. We will go search for your friend. It's our man. He's got something. Canton? I can barely hear you. What news have you got? I, I talked to the hotel guys, Mr. Marson. She checked out a viral bad last week. Headed off with Hans Vorlberg. How is she? Seems her health is fine, Mr. Marson, but, uh... What? Her behavior seems... Don't beat about the bush, Canton, please. Look, Mr. Marson, it's like this. I'm afraid that Miss Walker has been acting... Well, how do you say it? Differently. Did you sleep well, my child? Yes, yes, thank you. How is Hans? Alas, you brought him to us so late, my child. I fear we cannot do much. We are going to concentrate on tending to his soul. What? What did you say? The man is worn and old. His final hour is upon him. But that's impossible. Your friend is dying. You must believe me, my child. No, it just isn't possible. Hans Varlberg can't fail. Not like that. He's dreamed of reaching Siberia. It's just not fair. Men run after Chimera their whole lives, my child. But God detests dreamers and their utopian pies in the sky. Please take care of Hans, father, please. Torment yourself no longer, my girl. I will tend to the poor soul. Can I see him? No. I do not advise it. Deranged minds are often too addled by evil. And you could become contaminated by its sly malevolence. Look, contagion doesn't bother me. I've got to talk with him, you understand? The rules, Miss Walker. Remember the rules. No one talks to the sick. I just can't abandon Hans like that. I must see him immediately, you hear? Okay. So be it. Your friend is in the last chamber at the end of the corridor. I beseech thee, my girl. Pay no heed to the imprecations of a sick, delirious, dying man. I will wait for you in the chapel when everything is over, for the formalities you understand. Hans? Hans, can you hear me? Kate, where are we? Don't you worry. You're in very good hands. We cannot carry on our journey in these conditions, Hans. You are ill. You have to be cared for. I... I must go, Kate Walker. I said I'd keep you company until we reach Siberia. I brought you here to be treated. We don't have the time, Kate. We've got... We've got to go to Siberia, Kate. <laughs> Calm down, Hans, please. No! No! <laughs> Hans, we're at the monastery. Do you remember? In Valadilen, it is 7.15 p.m. 
Father is always punctual. He never stays at home. He always goes to the factory. He locks himself in his office and... No, Hans. Vladilen is where you were born. Here we're in Romansburg. Vladilen is miles away. We're going to take care of you. Alexei. Find Alexei Tukianov. Alexei Tukianov? Alexei. He has lived with the Yukals. He can cure me. It seems you rate the Yukals for their medicine. Yukal shaman medicine is very strong. Hans, all that shaman malarkey is nonsense. You know that. The Yukals know a lot of things, Kate Walker. A lot of things. Who is Alexei? An old monk. A friend. He knows about Yukal medicine. Why do you want me to find this monk, Alexei? Alexei... He can treat me. Hans, do try to be reasonable. Nobody here can treat you better than the old patriarch. Alexei knows you call medicine. The old patriarch is an ass. <laughs> so you really think this monk can cure you? Alexei can cure like the shaman. Shaman are the right doctors for me. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Okay, Kate. You like to eavesdrop. Eavesdrop? No. I clean and clean. That's all. I've just spoken to Hans. <laughs> and what news do you bring my sister? Um, he spoke to me of one of your brothers, named Alexei. Ah, Tempus Edax Rerum. <laughs> Brother Alexei is not of this world, my sister. My friend is very ill, and he told me to find a monk who would care for him. It is not I, that monk. I am no healer. I am but a humble servant of the monastery who tends to the brother's laundry. Can you help me find this monk? Oh, the patriarch would be furious. Furious! <laughs> I must finish my chores. Have you lived in the monastery for a long time? Oh, yes. For a very long time. <laughs> you must know all the monks who live there. Uh, yes, I think so, my sister. Must know, yes. <laughs> Where could this monk named Alexei be hiding? Felix Kipotuit Rerum Cognoseri Corsas. <laughs> I've been told about an indigenous people called the Yukos. You wouldn't know of them. Ajigwadajis. <laughs> so you don't know this Alexei, do you? No, no. <laughs> Omnis homo mendax. <laughs> Come on, you must know where Alexei is. <laughs> Moore's ultima ratio. <laughs>
Hello, father. Hello, my child. You really can't do anything for Hans? His destiny is not in mortal hands. We must pray, dear girl, pray for his redemption. But Hans has no reason to repent. His fever-driven outpourings are not those of a holy man. Oh, far from it. Hans Varlberg is not a sinner. The pagan fantasies with which he sullies the air in his delirium are those of a heretic. Pray, female, pray to save your friend from the sizzling fires of hell. You, you're a total crackpot. You're a fanatic. I will talk to Hans, you hear? We absolutely must continue our journey. We must. Don't even think about it, child. Mr. Vorlberg is in no fit state. Hans Vorlberg is going to see his dream come true. You hear me? Wretched girl. His dreams are almost at an end and there is nothing you can do. I talked to Hans. Yes. He seems better. It is but an illusion, my girl. His mortality is teetering on the brink. I know about these things. He told me about a monk who could help him. And what monk might that be, Miss Walker? A monk who has spent long years with the Yukols, that mysterious tribe from the far north. Uh, your friend is clearly very sick, my poor child. Hans often told me about the mysterious people of the far north, the Yukols. They are degenerate heathen savages that worship idols and false gods and resist the redemption of the Lord. Hans lived among them for a long time. They're like a second family to him. Please, dear girl, do not let yourself succumb to the quaint temptations of those pagans. Their only ambition is to wallow in their so-called primitive paradise and all its lechery and bestiality. Remember that those who live far from God doom themselves to eternal chastisement. Father, do you know a man named Alexei Tukianov? He was a heretic and charlatan. He is not worth the breath, my girl. It seems Hans Varlberg considers him highly. Your friend must have lost his marbles. But could I just meet the man anyway? No. Alexei Tukianov has left us. A long time ago, Miss Walker. Excuse my insistence, Father, but where might I be able to find Alexei Tukianov? It's very important. Alexei Tukianov is dead, my girl. May his soul rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace! Okay, I think I've heard all I need. I'm off. Go, my child. But weigh the consequences of your actions well. <sighs> This is really amazing work all the same. Nothing I can do. It's locked. 